Our guest today is the General Superintendent of the Forest Preserve of Cook County. He is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the nation's oldest and largest forest preserve system. Our guest today was appointed to this position by Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle four and a half years ago. He earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in political science from UIC. Ladies and gentlemen, Arnold Randall. Arnold. That video got me so fired up, I just jumped right out of my chair. Uh, good afternoon. It's certainly a pleasure to be here with you today. Jay, thank you for that kind introduction. And um, I'm back. This is my second opportunity to be here at the City Club of Chicago to give you a progress report on your forest preserves of Cook County. Cook County. I want to thank President Preckwinkle. She's not here. She's not able to be here today. But I want to thank her for her leadership. I want to thank our partners. Uh, Benjamin Cox, the President and CEO of Friends of the Forest Preserve, is here with us today. Jerry Edelman from Open Lands. Uh, I, I saw uh, Commissioner Deb Shore from uh, Metropolitan Water and Reclamation District. I certainly recognize her. All the Forest Preserve staff who are here, I'd like you to stand just so you could be recognized as well. <laughs> Those are the folks who are making it happen. Um, I want to recognize both the uh, Chicago Botanic Garden and the Brookfield Zoo, who are our key, wonderful partners for us. They're, they're certainly represented here. Thank you for being here. Um, and then I uh, lastly want to recognize my wife, Jennifer, and my oldest son, Eric, who are here with us today. <laughs> this year is, in fact, the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Forest Preserves of Cook County, one of the first such preserves in the nation. We think a centennial is an exciting time to take stock by honoring our history as a visionary leader in protecting natural lands so close to a major metropolitan area. It's also a good time to plan for the future uh, by connecting more residents to this phenomenal resource. So I'd like to start by giving you a little overview of the forest preserves. While many folks drive by the forest preserves on their, on their, their treks back and forth to work and to the city on a regular basis, not enough of them know what the preserves really have to offer. First, we're simply not a large park district. Uh, that is, uh, I think, maybe a big misperception. The parks are phenomenal. Uh, Tanya, thanks for being here. Um, but the forest preserves are different. I appreciate what the urban parks can provide for their users. Green space of any type is really important. But our preserves offer something far different. We're a world apart from the urban environment that surrounds us. And you can explore this hidden world on your own time and on your own terms. Over the past century, the preserves we manage have grown to more than 69,000 acres of land. That's 11% of the county footprint. Not only is our forest preserve one of the first in the nation, but it's also the largest. And we're not just talking forests. Our preserves constitute one of the most ecologically diverse areas in the United States. They're comprised of wetlands, prairies, woodlands, and savannas. To put it in terms of appropriate to this lunch gathering, we're an ecological buffet. First, we must manage this land and ensure its ecological well-being. That's our first task. It's in our mission. Uh, this includes protecting its plants and animals, some of which don't exist anywhere else in the nation. Second, we must provide a county of roughly 5 million people with opportunities to experience and learn about the great natural resources that are right here at their doorstep. And finally, at a time of limited public resources, we're committed to running an organization that is inclusive, efficient, transparent, and effective. To accomplish our mission of preserving this precious land for future generations, we must educate people about its value. This requires a strong connection between the land and the residents of Cook County. And the best way to do so is by encouraging more people to experience it. Much of what we do today is fully consistent with the vision of our founders, which included promoting outdoor recreation. Even 100 years ago, they realized that was important. Not only are we conserving the natural bounty they left us, but we're enabling the residents of Cook County to enjoy it. Our preserves, I'll just give you a few numbers, our preserves include more than 300 miles of marked trails for hiking, biking, cross-country skiing, and horseback riding, 274 picnic groves. Those two areas are the areas that most people experience preserves using the trails and using our picnic groves. Ten golf courses, so we have some golfers in, golfers in here, I'm sure. Six nat nature centers, and as of yesterday, 23 dedicated nature preserves. That's the highest protection available in the state of Illinois for natural areas. And that doesn't even include our world-class institutions of the Brookfield Zoo and the Chicago Botanic Garden. 
If you don't take anything else out of this today, then know we're all connected, we're all partners, and it's important that you know that. But this year, we're also incorporating some activities our founders could not have imagined, like zip lining and zorbing. It's all part of building a core mission to trying to reach and serve more residents of Cook County. We offer movies and concerts and other arts events in the preserves. We have aquatic centers and paddling programs that feature rowboats, kayaks, and canoes. Our youth ambassador program provides valuable teen internships for a diverse group of young people that reflects the diversity of our county. We also feature a special summer program called Citizen Scientists in Action. So while you may find the things that you knew and loved in the Forest Preserve, they're still here, we're adding new choices and new experiences to, that will attract more families and more children. This is the vision I share with County Board President Tony Preckwinkle, who, more importantly for me, is also the Forest Preserve Board President. The preserves belong to everyone. They have a role to play in alleviating some of our most intractable problems, such as preventing violence, improving education, creating jobs, and addressing public health concerns. Now, I'm a city guy, and I was born and raised on the south side of the city of Chicago, and I've had the opportunity to work and play in the parks my whole life, but I also had a lot of time, uh, thank goodness for my parents, <laughs> <laughs> to spend a lot of time in nature and on farms and in rural settings. This comes out of the Yvonne Randall family album photo, photo archive. Um, well, a lot of you have heard me talk about my experience writing and learning to write as a child. That really informed you know, my experience as a city guy and understanding why nature is so important. Uh, we're, I'm not just talking about city parks, though. We're talking about being in a large and open natural space where the trees and fields are all you can see stretching into the horizon. I'm talking about being completely immersed in nature where you lose all sense of the city around you. Too many children and their families in Cook County are suffering from nature deficit disorder. That means they haven't had a chance to experience the natural world in all its glory. There are children living in the city of Chicago today who have never seen Lake Michigan. There are children living in Cook County today who have never taken a walk in the woods or seen an animal in the wild or heard the sound of a running stream. So as we enter our second century, a large part of our mission is to expand the horizons of all children and their families, but to accomplish this ambitious goal, we cannot ignore the basics. We have to make sure that our foundation is secure. That's why President Preckwinkle has guided us to focus on three key areas. First, we've been working hard to address decades of deferred maintenance of the district's infrastructure, including bridge, trail, and facility repairs. We've invested more than $100 million in major capital improvements, including two nature centers and many miles of new trail. We've also overhauled our hiring process to make sure that it is free and fair, or fair and free from political influence. We became the second jurisdiction in the county to fully comply with the Shackman degree banning political hiring. And we made sure to show up our financial foundation as well. For the past four years, we presented balanced budgets with no tax increases, which everybody is thrilled about. Uh, we adopted a capital improvement plan for the next five years of $138.5 million with roughly, roughly $52 million in spending this year. Not only will these projects improve our facilities, but they will also create jobs. And I'm proud to say that our contracts that we've let so far are exceeding our goals for participation by minority and women-owned businesses. Finally, We've, had, we've worked hard to strengthen and expand our relationships and our partnerships. None of what we do is really possible without really strong partners. Those partners and, and, and sponsorship include businesses like REI in Columbia and with nonprofit organizations like Open Lands and Friends of the Forest Preserves, Fishing Buddies, Green Corps Chicago, and many others. We are working with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to remove invasive species and shrubs and replace them with native species. And we work with Chicago Wilderness, an organization which I also chair, uh, Friends of the Chicago River, the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, and others in putting together our next century conservation plan. This plan challenges us to think about the forest preserves beyond the obvious benefits of preservation and recreation, but also as a resource that can drive our economy and improve public health. Already we put these ideas into action by creating new plans for recreation, trails, camping, signage, and land acquisition, to name a few. And in March, we produced a comprehensive natural and cultural resources master plan. You might not know that the forest preserves are home to more than 100 endangered plant and animal species, or that we are one of the best places in Cook County to find cultural artifacts, from our Native American and early 
from Native Americans and early European settlers. Our master plan will help us to maintain and protect these precious resources. President Preckwinkle also commissioned a Conservation and Policy Council comprised of civic leaders with diverse backgrounds and diverse disciplines. This council is working with us to connect our strategic goals with our budget process so that we can accomplish our key objectives without further burdening taxpayers. You've got to have a plan, but you've got to make sure that your budget connects to your plan and make sure that you're accomplishing your goals. And so while we have a phenomenal plan and we work with partners to create it, we want to make sure that it was a plan that did not sit on the shelf that we used. And so we've been actively working to, to implement that plan. Preserving and protecting our natural areas is a collaborative process, and so is attracting more people and families to experience nature and all that it has to offer. Most county residents experience the forest preserves in the course of recreation. From hiking and biking our trails, to sledding and cross-country skiing in the winter, or having a picnic with family and friends. Over the years, we've provided other programming that has encouraged residents to visit and expand their horizons. These opportunities include horseback riding, archery, visits to nature centers, and other activities traditionally, traditionally associated with the district. But in our second century, it offers an opportunity to do more. We're particularly interested in attracting more families and young people to, to the preserves where they can forge connections with nature that will last for a lifetime. Of course, we're competing with video games and smartphones. Just look at the table. You can see them around. Uh, so we need to give, or in your hand, uh, so we need to give them something different. I'm guilty as everybody with doing that. Um, so we need to give them something different, something they can't get by staring at a screen. So what, that's why we're developing new pro programs like zip lining and zorbing. So that big ball there, it's probably 10 to 12 feet high. And inside of that is me and <laughs> Chris Slattery, our director of planning, trying it out for the first time. And we did not get sick. So it was a lot of fun, actually. Um, we're also introducing th new things like zip lines. That's, yeah, that's me on the zip line. Um, and so we think this will attract new audiences and, and attract new people. And frankly, we want to do things that are still compatible with our mission. So we're also offering bike rentals starting in June. So that's exciting because not everybody wants to haul their bike to the Forest Preserve. So you can rent a bike and, and, and do some biking on our trails that way. Activities like these make kids and families the stars of their own games. Instead of a virtual reality, they're providing young people with real life experience by zipping over and rolling through their Forest Preserves. And they'll do it in the fresh air and a safe environment with adult supervision, something that not many kids in Cook County get to experience every day. Who knows, maybe they'll even take a nature hike or visit a nature center while they're with us. At the very least, they will know that these natural spaces filled with woods, fields, and fun are really not that far away from their neighborhoods. One outdoor activity that most city kids have never had the experience, uh, opportunity to experience is to spend the night in the woods, legally. Uh, <laughs> For anyone who's ever gone camping, you know how life-changing that experience can be, myself included. There's a time to connect with your fellow campers and the natural environment that surrounds you. The distractions of a modern world tend to melt away as you sit around your campfire telling stories and roasting s'mores like the ones we placed on your tables. The setting sun and twinkling stars present a much different kind of widescreen and interactive entertainment that you would get at home. We want to make this experience available to all of our county's children and families, many of whom have never had that opportunity and probably never would unless we made it available to them. So for the first time in 50 years, we are reintroducing family camping to the preserves at five sites across the county, and we are thrilled to do it. The first site is opening Friday this weekend at Shabona Woods in the Calumet City, South Holland area with others coming online uh, within an another month or so after that. So we'll have five campgrounds open this summer. We're really thrilled about that. These sites will offer a mix of group and family camping with bunk houses and rustic cabins and sites for pitching tents and even parking RVs. Reservations for these campsites opened last month and we've been encouraged by the initial response. We are nearly sold out for Saturday and Sunday at Camp Shabona. So if you still wanna go, there's a few spots left, but you gotta hurry. We're working through our own network uh, of, uh, and with our own community partners to spread the word, but we can use your help. You can start by joining the social media conversation, so pick up those smartphones again, uh, with the hashtag Camp and Cook, and you can do that right now. Take a look at the s'mores packets that we placed at everyone's seat. 
Uh, one person at the table will have, should have a rather large marshmallow imprinted with the Forest Preserve Camping logo on it. So not everybody has a logo, but somebody does. <clears throat> if that's you, take out your smartphone, take a photo of the marshmallow, and post it on Twitter or Facebook using the hashtag Camp and Cook. I'll give you a second. <laughs> or 10 minutes, right. Okay, so here's the deal. The first 25 people, it gets better. The first 25 people who show their post to our team at the check-in tables when you walk out, the first 25 people to show that they posted something will then receive a free camping lantern, camping lantern courtesy of WXRT Radio, which you can use on your camp trip when you come visit us. So, as you can see, there's a lot going on in our 100th year. I'm glad I, I feel the buzz. That's great. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, there's a lot going on in our 100th year, and, and to help us celebrate, uh, the Forest Preserve is hosting a special event this September, so put this down too, that we're calling 100 Years, 100 Events. You don't have to commit to doing all 100 events. I'm thinking I'm going to challenge Jay to do some of them with me. Uh, and we hope that you might want to try at least some of them, though and bring your family and friends and co-workers along. Today I'm inviting you to join us. If you've never visited the forest preserves, please try us. If you've come in the past year or come in the past to hike or bike, maybe give zip lining or zorbing or overnight camping a try. If you have a business, we can explore opportunities to sponsor groups or activities. If you work with a foundation or a nonprofit, we invite you to collaborate with our newly formed Forest Preserve Foundation, uh, whose executive director is Shelley Davis. Shelley, could you stand? is with us here today. <laughs> Collaborate with us and help us raise resources so that we can support more people and young people coming out to the preserves. If you have time, please join at one of our restoration volunteer groups uh, that weed out invasive species and help us to maintain our lands or simply volunteer as a guide or a mentor. If you're already mentoring a young person, especially one who lives in the city, try bringing them to one of the Forest Preserve's many activities. And now that you know we're up to in our centennial year, you can spread the word to your friends, families, and colleagues. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, and join the conversation with the hashtag Camp and Cook. With all this new and improved, it's easy to see what we're not just your grandparents' forest preserves, although we want your grandparents to come too. That's <laughs> but we'd also like to be yours. And a refuge for everyone who lives, works, and plays in Cook County. Thank you for coming here today to listen to what I have to say, and I appreciate any questions. So I neglected to tell everyone, but I'm thinking everyone knows because most of you were here for breakfast, that um, you had questions, you had papers on the table uh, if, you wanted, if you wanted to bring up questions. But who knew, Dennis, that it would be the Forest Preserve that would actually kick off social media for City Club? <laughs> we have been trying to get everybody to tweet and to do all these other things regarding social media. And who knew some s'mores would get you guys to using your social, your, your social media? Um, Ashvin, I'm all down for the zorbing, zip lining. Are we? We're going to do this, right? Yeah, but the zip lining. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Although I did see that three-year-old. She was about three, wasn't she? Uh, I'm not sure, but pretty young. Yeah, that zip lining. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. Um, but the zorbing. Yeah, we're down with that. We're going to do that. Okay. Um, I have a whole new appreciation for the deer that were blocking my drive on Thatcher a few years ago. Um, a dear family was literally blocking me trying to get somewhere, and it was a family who was literally like, you're going to wait for us, as they were coming across the, sure. and we were like, you're blocking our way, dude, but now I have a whole new appreciation because they were coming out of the forest preserve. You know, on Thatcher, everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Okay, because you've been blocked by that same dear family, haven't you? Yeah. So I only have two questions. Are there more questions coming? We got some more coming? Um, Stu Cohen is here. Where? Oh, way back there. Hi, Stu. He's here. Everybody. Hi, Stu. <laughs> because it's the City Club, and we just like to acknowledge you. <laughs> uh, so we have a couple of questions for you, Arnold. Um, Donald Scott, who is a member, says, how, how do the golf courses work environmentally? 
as a part of the overall forest preserve goal. So we have uh, 10 golf courses run by Billy Casper Golf. I see folks from Billy Casper Golf with us here today, and they do a wonderful job, uh, certainly with the golfer experience. Um, but the hab we have any number of habitats that are part of golf courses. We have, obviously, trees, and, and uh, the fairways are not ecologically sensitive, but the trees and, and some of the, the ecosystems around there are really important to what we, we have. Obviously, birds migrate, and, and there's all sorts of designations that come along with having these wonderful spaces, uh, they take up a significant amount of space in the forest preserve system. So they are very important to the larger ecological health of the forest preserve system. I think in the four and a half years that I've been on board, we worked really hard to, to improve the relationship to make sure that we're better managing the facilities, both at the golf courses, but also the trees and, and uh, the landscapes there as well. So I think you know it's just as important as anything else in the forest preserve system, and it's a significant portion of our holdings. Thomas McElroy, who is a member, uh, Level 1 Global Solutions asks actually about the zip line and says, um, where is it and when is it going to be open? What is it? <laughs> the, the zip line. Oh, yes. Um, we are working hard. It's going to be at Bemis Woods. Um, we are working, which is in the western suburbs. And um, we are working hard with a company I'm not going to name because we're still working through the logistics of it. But we hope to have that up and running by the end of the summer. Uh, but it's exciting. Uh, we see that as a major attraction for a lot of people, um, a lot of uh, people who like to be adventuresome. And so we feel like we can, it's something that we can do in a way that still respects the forest preserves, that doesn't do damage, uh, which is important. That, that We're not going to do roller coasters, but we're going to do things that can fit in well and uh, help people to try the forest preserves for the first time. And zip lines is just one of those things, you know, arts and culture, doing smaller music events, not Lollapalooza, but doing some smaller sort of intimate things to get people to come out and enjoy nature and then get them, once they're there, get them connected to what's beyond the picnic groves is really important to us. So we recognize not everybody's starting in the same place, but once we get there, we think we can really convince a lot of folks that this is it's valuable for them to be there and to come back. I was looking at Jim Terman, and he said arts, culture, zip lining. I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't understand that zip lining, arts, and culture. I'm not going to be zip lining. Are you going to be zip lining, Jim? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, Arnold. I'm, I just want to be clear. Just get strapped on and go. Really yeah, really you don't ever need to worry about me zip lining. I, <laughs> yeah, it's just. And I'm a pretty adventuresome girl, but I'm just not going to be zip lining. Uh, certainly, thank you for educating us, informing us, and. Um, I'm certainly, he's doing a great job at the Forest Preserve. I think we've got the best person. Oh, we've got another question. We're right, a late return in. Warren Ribley asks, I've noticed several trees being cut and removed in the preserve. Is that part of our restoration project, and can you expand on the goals of that project? <clears throat> So there's a couple of big reasons why we would be moving trees. One is uh, ash trees have died at an unbelievable rate throughout the region. That started in Michigan and has unfortunately worked its way here to this part of uh, you know, Illinois and, and has really wiped out our ash population, which you can see in the forest preserves and you can certainly see even in the city with city trees. Uh, the trees that are uh, near places where people frequent, they have to come down because at some point they become hazards. So unfortunately we have to remove those. Um, we do restoration work, though, so part of, we're not just forests, we're all these other ecosystems I mentioned, we're savannas, we're wetlands, we're prairies, uh, and so part of restoration of some of these, these old systems that used to exist here uh, sometimes requires removing some of those trees as part of what we're doing, but uh, there are a lot of trees in the forest preserve, and there are a lot of trees that were planted over time that probably shouldn't have been planted as well, but there are, there are plenty of trees for everybody. And it's important to recognize that we're talking about a lot of different ecosystems that exist here in Cook County, which is very diverse ecologically. It's unusual. You have the Lake Michigan watershed. You have a lot of different things coming together. You have dunes. You have a lot of things coming together in this part of the state and the country that don't exist anywhere else in the country. And so we're very fortunate, but we have to manage them in a certain way. And that involves uh, burning the land sometimes. It, that requires removing certain types of invasive plants. So that's what we actively do. And if you want to know more about that, we'd be glad to talk to you and help help educate you on why that's really important to manage them in that way. Thank you, Arnold, and thank you to your staff for doing the great work that they do and to all the commissioners. <laughs>